What really happened? <clears throat> Uh, what happened, Dari, this week, and uh, the union made a public apology yesterday, was unfortunate. And, uh, and uh, boardrooms have issues, and uh, every board has got a, its style of management. But uh, what the statement that was made early in the week was unwarranted, because it came at the heat of the moment when um, Kenyans should have been celebrating the success of their team. And it was uh, definitely very unfair to steal the thunder uh, from uh, the achievement that the boys had made. And uh, as a board, we had made an agreement. We had reached an agreement that we have a review at a specified date. Uh, but it happened, and you know, the, 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 the director who, was, who made the statement apologized. And when, when you make a mistake and you accept the mistake, that's what under the bridge. And we should not dwell so much on, on what was wrong or who was lied. Uh, we have, we have uh, critical assignments ahead of us right now. Uh, we, we have the World Cup on site. It's only a couple of weeks ahead of us. And our focus now is to make sure that the team is well prepared because we are going to the World Cup as one of the favorites. So, so, so the question then, uh, this team has done very well. Uh, Mr. Wang, obviously, uh, this season we are what, 99 points? Uh, better than what, you know, the last season we're just looking at relegation, if you like. Uh, this team has done very well uh, in the sight of Kenyans. What do you think are some of these core things that have made this team to get here and why would anyone want to change that management um, yeah it's 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 difficult to you should not change a winning team uh, but when you look at what we where we are coming from from the time Mike Friday came in he brought in the performance aspect of the team uh, today Kenya Sevens is a performance team. And even the preparation, we use the performance programs. Um, some of the issues that the board has, has come out very strongly uh, that we need to address is that, uh, and we raised the issues when we, before we signed the contract with Mike Friday. Mike is only available for the team six days of a month. And uh, it's the feeling of a lot of people that if we had a coach who'd spend more time with the boys, you'll have better results. You know, as much as we have been successful, we've been growing hot and cold. That goes without saying. Um, and, and when you look at the skills level, and with skills, you also look at, uh, look at the mistakes the team makes, um, the mistakes the team make in a, makes in a game. Uh, There's the total preparation of the team, the conditioning, the way you tackle the game. All that total is what we are going to be analyzing when it comes to, to the review, the review. But, uh, but uh, what we went for in the beginning was a quick fix but we want to get into a more consistent pattern. And that more consistent pattern can only come if we, we have a coach who will spend more time with the players. And that is the story we are going to sell to Mike Friday. We ask him, please, can you be able to sacrifice more time with this team? And if we agree with him, we'll, we'll, we'll modify our contract and we move on, we move on. All right, <coughs> so Mr. Muthi, from where you sit today, having done your preliminary review, if you like, has Mark Friday delivered? As far as I'm concerned, he has. He has. He has delivered. And that is why we're in the top five of the top, of, of the top ten. Let's speak about this team. Uh, out of the nine circuits, five out of them, we've reached main cup quarterfinals. And in fact, one, of the, one, one final. And this team has done very well, surprisingly. Why, what is it that we're doing right this time that we didn't do 
right, in the seasons before because the team appears to be more consistent, whether you like it or not. We are getting more points. If, if, if I could walk you down memory lane, uh, we have just come from London. The last competition of last year, when Kenya was being humiliated, I was there with the Minister for Sports then, uh, Dr. Paulo Tuoma, and the Permanent Secretary, James Waweru. I was also there with two directors of Kenya Airways, uh, Alban Mwenda and the CEO of Kenya Airways, uh, Mr. Buvi. And uh, after the games, we sat. I called for a meeting. And I told them, gentlemen, if we don't get a professional coach for this team, we can as well forget about playing at this level. Uh, because the, the, the World Series is a different level. And uh, when you look at our players, by the time they get to that level, they are disadvantaged. They are meeting players who started the game when they were very young, so their skill levels are very high, and their coaching uh, panels are also very advanced because they came from that playing fraternity, and then they are always... So we are always playing cash-up. As a player, you are playing cash-up. As a coach, you are playing cash-up. And I thought if we could get a professional coach, definitely we would be able to bridge the gap between the, 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 the developing nation, which we are, with the top nations. And uh, when they gave me the green right, that's the time we went out uh, to, to look for a coach. Unfortunately, we were given a big list by the Lang Lang England Rugby Union, and uh, we had about 15 coaches to select from. We, we didn't have the money to bring those coaches to Kenya for interviews. We didn't have the money to accommodate them here, here, here in Kenya. And uh, that's how we ended up with single sourcing uh, with, for Mike Friday. And um, we knew, as a professional, he would help us, first of all, to get, out, to get us out of the relegation danger. And uh, whatever terms that he gave us, we had to agree. And that's why we need to review the contract that we have with him, especially more so on unavailability. Because if you can have him more, Mike Friday is one of the best coaches in the world. And I'm telling you, if Mike Friday can agree to come and live in Kenya, will have the best coach. So the problem we're having with him now is that he's not available to be here more often. He's here six days a month. Yes, availability is the main is the main bone of contention. It's the main bone of contention. Because you know we want a coach who we don't want to have to use foreign coach coaches forever. We want a coach who'll help us mentor our our local coaches so that we can also bridge that gap. We also want a coach who will help us mentor the up-and-coming players. We want a coach who will have time to go to Western Kenya, which is the bastion of, 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 of Kenya rugby, and spend maybe a week with youngsters there. We want a coach who will, who will be able to have more time and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, to understand the Kenyan, the Kenyan culture, the Kenyan culture of playing the game, and that's why we are having the review. And w once we have the review, once we have the review, because Mike has also tasted Kenya, and you know, Kenya has so much potential. And every successful coach wants to, to, to handle a successful side. When we do the review, don't be surprised. You, you might hear Mike is coming to settle with his family in Kenya. And uh, we have no issues with Mike. We have no issues with Mike. Only a few, a few housekeeping issues here and there, which are no more with every, every engagement. But, uh, but uh, to be honest, for what we are spending uh, as a union on the, on the professional, professional professionalization of our seventh team, we will definitely need to look for a full-time coach. But when we look for a full-time coach, now that we already have Mike Friday, it's now our burden. We cannot have a coach of lesser <laughs> status or lesser caliber than, than Mike Friday. So that's our burden now. That's our burden as a, as a board and as a union. Uh, because we cannot <laughs> then bring a mediocre coach to replace Mike when we had Mike. Uh, the and, public and, will and, hang and us. And that, that was leading to my next question. Yeah. Supposing we have this review after the World Cup yeah. and those terms and conditions are not acceptable to Mike Friday or to the carry board, if yeah. you like. What happens? What are options of coaches? 
Uh, now, what I would like to tell you is that the Kenya team is hot. It's hot in the world market of coaches. Every successful coach in this world would like to associate with that team because he know it will be a success story for him. But uh, what I'm saying is don't be surprised if you hear Mike Friday has agreed to our new terms. Because even the sponsor himself, Mike has a relationship with him. And the sponsor also want, a lot of people don't want to do changes. People don't want to do, to do wild changes. You might do a change that might, uh, might, like, that might uh, backfire on you. So even the sponsor is also watching this. And uh, even the sponsor knows that the terms of engagement between coaches, the union, players, it all boils down to finances. And uh, if we can agree on the terms, and uh, there are other, other conditions coming out for Mike, if they, are, if they are agreeable, even the sponsors and the union, we have no issues. Mm -hmm. my, my, my final question on this uh, board and uh, court situation, uh, <clears throat> in the end, this is about the players, it's about the relationship with the players. Are the players happy with the coach? Oh, fantastic. Mike has got a fantastic relationship with, uh, with, with players. That's the reason why we have a leeway of Mike handling the team up to the World Cup, even under review being done before. If he has no good relationship with the, referee or with the, with the, with the players, we could not allow him to get to continue with the World Cup engagement. But they have a superb relationship. They have a superb relationship. They have no issues. And, uh, and uh, we, we are, we, as a board, we are, we are, we are satisfied that uh, Mike, his contact with the players is excellent. He has brought in discipline. He has brought in character. He's brought in passion on the, on, on the approach of the game. And he has changed our game into, into a winning, 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 winning setup. So we must give credit where it belongs. And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, I, I, going forward, going forward, whatever happens at the, re uh, at the review, Kenya Sevens future is safe. Mm -hmm. And to the players, uh, are they benefiting, Mwangi seriously, from this success? Are they earning more? Are they, uh, do they have, you know, all the, what, what would come as, you, you as the main employer, if you like, you know, do they have the benefits? Yes, uh, and I must pay tribute to Kenya Airways. Um, because um, it doesn't matter whether we, 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 we have the best talent in the world, like we've always had. It doesn't matter whether we, had, we have the best coaches in the world, like we have Mike Friday. If you don't have the sponsor putting the money there, it will count for nothing. Because Mike will not come here for free. Even those players will, not, they will never get, they will never get, get, uh, get uh, inspired if there's no admiration. And the sponsor has been paying those players directly, and he has been paying them well. I cannot, I cannot diverge uh, the, the, the salaries of, 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 of players in public because that's an, uh, a contractual obligation we have with the players and with the, with, the, with, the, with, the, with the sponsor. But I can tell you, the players are comfortable. And also, they have been the bonus scheme the bonus scheme, which has been very, very lucrative. Every time they perform, they get good bonuses. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, as, a, as, as a board, we want to get involved uh, because some of those young men, are, some of them are very young, eh? and uh, they have earned quite some bonuses. Eh? So we are looking for ways of how we can assist them to invest that money, especially in property, especially in property or in proper, uh, proper sensible investments because some of the bonuses they have earned this, this year alone, if managed well, it can change your life. It can change your life. Mm -hmm. And we, 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 as a board, we don't want to see, to be meeting, the, the, the rugby playing career is very short. You're talking about five, six, seven years. And I don't want to meet my superstars, like Wiri, Wiri Abaka, uh, a boy who was named in the all-time uh, rugby sevens team in England for this year. I meet him in the streets uh, after four, five, seven years, uh, not having personality and confidence and pride that he has represented this country in. And it's, 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 it's upon us as, as, as a board, more so me as their chairman, to hold their hand. I, have, I am in business 
and I've gone through a lot of land mines I've, and, and I know you don't need a lot of money to succeed in business. And uh, when you hold the hand of those boys, you can find them being very, very successful very, very soon. Mm -hmm. My final question, this team is going to the World Cup. Uh, what are we expecting? Uh, I would like to appeal to everybody to be calm and support uh, this team. You know, one good thing uh, that has happened with this team, and uh, I was very encouraged to see how Kenyans reacted to what the union did earlier in the week. The whole, the whole country was in uproar. Uh, that, that's a very good sign, and it shows that this team doesn't belong to the union. It doesn't belong, belong, belong to, to the government. It actually belongs to the Kenyan people. And uh, that ownership is, is what makes a sport. That's what builds a sport. And I, I must thank Kenyans for owning this team. And I want to assure them that this team is ready for the World Cup. Is ready for the World Cup. These boys are just gelling. They're just gelling. They are maturing. We have not reached where we want to go yet. But I assure Kenyans, watch this piece. If you bring that cup, don't be surprised. <laughs> Wang yeah. this is a success story that you're carrying. Thank Make you, sure sir. it doesn't end. Thank you very much. All right. Asante, Thank sir. you for making time. Thank you very much. All right, talking there to the chairman of the Kenya Rugby Union, Wang Yimuthi, assuring the country that, well, the situation with Mark Friday is being dealt with and dealt with the best way possible. Most importantly, the team is in safe hands, in good hands, and they are performing and they will perform in the upcoming World Cup with the best of their abilities. We wish them well. Do stay with Katie and Lavoa. After here, it gets markier. The piggy stories. Stay with us. All right, welcome, to, welcome back to KTN Live Wire. Now, you certainly, <coughs> sorry, you certainly uh, sure didn't miss the story of occupying the parliament. If you did, you did miss the imagery of the pigs in parliament. So, just how did they get there? Why? Well, we have a backstory for you. Let's just now take a look at these pictures that we exclusively obtained. I will mention for you. No, 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 All right, that's the protest earlier this week uh, to protest that move by MPs to disband the SRC and indeed to, in fact, to increase their own salaries. The studio is me with the daredevil, calls himself Boniface Mwangi. Boniface, Miyaji. Karibu Sana. Asante. Let me ask you. Yes. Where are the pigs? Uh, they are the Kenya Society of Prevention of Animal Cruelty. But I'm going there tomorrow to pick them up. Yeah. They are oh. our property. So oh. I'm going Why are you cruel to the pigs, Boniface? We are not cruel to the pigs. As you can see, it's the police who tear gas the pigs and wash the dirty pigs with their water, the water cannon. 
you've definitely followed the conversation and uh, there are people who disagree with your use of pigs say one we agree with you to go and protest against the MP's salary issue, but you didn't have to use the pigs. How do you react to such? I don't have to react to justify myself. They got the message that you have pigs and you have M pigs, and our politicians are behaving like pigs from the animal farm. So the pigs are in good company at parliament. I know Duali agrees that he's an M pig as well because he's a greedy man uh, who called Kenyan thugs. He called us all of us thieves for voting for him. He's actually suing you. He, he should sue the pigs. Actually, the pigs are offended that were compared with the Dwale because Dwale is a greedy pastoralist. Uh, the man went to parliament. Kenyans queued for hours to vote. Then he goes to parliament and calls for two million Kenyans thieves. He's a thief. We're actually offended by Dwale. I don't even know, actually. Dojis, yeah? That's where he comes from? I pity people of Dojis. If that's your representative, then you guys go down. Let's talk about uh, your, your your protest on that day. Uh, we're seeing on it screen. It wasn't my protest, actually. It was Kenyan's protest. The Kenyan's protest that yes. day. Uh, thanks for that correction. And the huge protest that was out there that was meant to tell MPs, you cannot do this. You cannot increase your salaries in our face. Where do you think is the place of Kenyans in getting that message? Do you think that message was lost? No, it was delivered. That's why I'm here. That's why you invited me. <laughs> <laughs> That's why people are talking about it. I think the problem is that members of parliament are actually trying to spin the story now and turn into a religious issue. There's no religion. Greed has no religion. So Duala should stop saying, oh, religion, my religion. It's nothing. It has nothing to do with religion. Uh, the message got home that our members of parliament don't care about us. That's the truth. It's all about themselves. And I think I'm here and I hope the president is watching and I would appeal to him. Uh, Jubilee government has the majority in parliament. As you can see, Uhuru and Ruto cabinet nominees were rubber stamped through parliament. They just passed through. Which means if Uhuru really cared, he would actually tell those members of parliament, no pay raise. You're not going to get an increment, and I've said it. And they, they listen to him. After all, he has the majority in parliament. So we as Kenyans need to communicate that to, like most of the Kenyans, Uhuru was elected by 6 million Kenyans. And they did a poll, 88% of the Kenyan people don't support the salary increment which means most of us don't support the salary increment. And if the president was to tell them please to stop, the Kenyans would actually applaud him. In, in, in this particular conversation, uh, it's pretty much out of Kenyans' hands, if you like, in the sense that it's now a matter inside parliament. The petition uh, has been tabled and parliamentarians will discuss it. Uh, to what point would you think the Kenyan, the me, you, the others who are watching tonight. Where do you think is the Kenyan's place for them to raise their voices? Uh, number one, the members of parliament are breaking the constitution. They can't increase the salaries. They have no right to do that. Uh, number two, we need to despise them. We need to torment their lives. I want when you see a member of parliament in the supermarket, call him a thief and an name pig. I want them to feel so under siege and so hated that even when the kids go to school, they the kids will be told by their fellow, if an MP has a son in school or a daughter, he'll, the daughter will feel the hostility from Kenyans. That has to happen, actually. Because right now, if the member of parliament showed up today, we call him Moshimiwa, and he start bowing down. Just imagine if you see that guy in the streets and you spit. The girl gets, you'll feel like, you know what, I feel unwanted. And they'll change their mind, they'll become servants. Right now, we become the slaves. Kenyans are slaves to the members of parliament. Uh, anything they want, they get. You have to realize that when a member of parliament walks to parliament, he sits on a 200,000 shilling seat, and they have a seat in allowance to sit down. Uh, when they drive that car that you're buying for them for 5 million shillings, we pay for their fuel, and you pay for their driver, and you pay for their bodyguard, and they have a secretary. Who is the master? They have become masters, and we are their slaves, and we need to end this slave's relationship. And one of the reasons why we have become the slaves is because we sold our votes to them. Uh, most of us voted, but we, because we were paid 50 shillings or 100 or 200 shillings, or we had a party euphoria and we voted for X party or that party. Uh, so we have no stake. But guess what? If you reclaim back your voice in the space and you told, tell that member of parliament, whoever it is, that you cannot get the salary hike, they, 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 they'll listen to you. But you need the anger to be felt across the country by each and every one of us standing up and saying, this time you have gone too far.
Where are the, where, where are the many Kenyans who you represent and who are representing that protest and who didn't show up in that protest? Where are they? Uh, at home, <coughs> tweeting, Facebooking, commenting, and saying, oh, you did wrong. Everyone has an opinion, but they're not willing to do it. And so, yeah, let me tell you, actually, even if I went there and stripped naked, people say, oh, maybe a small balls, this, that. The truth is, everyone will have an opinion about something. But at least me, I'm out of my comfort zone and I'm doing something about it, me and some other tenants, like the people who helped me raise the money, Cooksey guy and some other guys who gave the money to buy the pigs and all that, and we're able to buy more pigs than one. Actually, we ran out of money, we wanted to buy more, more, more pigs. The thing is, those Kenyans watching at home and the ones who like commenting about everything should actually do something about this issue. The moment these members of parliament get away this first one of the salary increment, they're going to continue breaking the law over and over again. Why do you allow them to steal? That's stealing. If you go, come to my local village and you steal a chicken, we burn you alive. It is wrong. Taking law into our own hands. Our cops every other day are killing young men stealing in town, extrajudicial killings. We kill the poor thug, but you elect the rich thug. If you're going to kill the poor thug, you should kill the rich thug as well. If you're going to lynch someone for stealing a tire, why don't you lynch this guy stealing a million shillings? Lynch the guy. I'm serious. Why do we have double standards? We kill unarmed people every day in this country. Or you hear cops kill three people, one was armed, two are not armed. Why was the people who are not armed, who are unarmed, why were they killed? Why can't you use the same, same logic? You know that cop logic of stupidity. Use the same logic in dealing with the members of parliament. Like wewe, unalipo alifu miya tano. Wendako wangezo alifu miya nani, yoni wizi. Pop, pop, pop. Why are the double standards? Boni, are you scared? What? Scared of what? What are they going to do to me? You know, you can't kill me twice. I'm going to die once. My life is not my own, it belongs to God. So, even if you kill me, it will still continue. I'm not alone, as in, was I alone in the streets? I'm not the only brave Kenyan in this country. There are many of us. Just because I'm on this show, it doesn't mean that I'm the only one who is important. There are many of us. You can't kill an ideal time has come. You can't kill all of us. The truth is, Kenyans are going to rise up. If Uhuru and Ruta think are going to have it easy, Kenyans are going to rise up. We are tired. We got tired of Moy. He was kicked out. Kibaki knew when I retire, and these guys are here. They haven't even lived for. They haven't been in office for for hundred days, and we're giving them trouble. Kenyans are tired of being slaves. All you need is one madman, and I think I'm one of those madmen. And then people talk about it. The pig story has been like a story for the last three days, and I hope some crazy Kenyan are going to do the same thing in Mombasa, in Kisumu, in Mandera, in Dungoma, in Garissa. We can rise up where people take back the power because the power is in the people. Uh, Uhuru and Ruto are honored to be in office. They're given a mandate by the people and they should respect that because the moment they don't respect that, you're going to dissent and you're going to rebel. I must ask you this and you've been asked this several times and I've followed actively this story from the Vulture story, spent nights with you drawing <laughs> vultures on the streets. Uh, the coffins in parliament, burning the coffins uh, at Woli the other week, and now the pigs. Where is this going? Uh, towards uh, an empowered people where you're not afraid of speaking, that I'm free to speak my mind. Uh, that's all you want. As in, I want to live in a free country where I don't feel like I'm constrained. When I go to the streets, I don't want to be beaten by cops. Right now, I'm still suffering my ribs because I was beaten. And when you have a constitution, it should be respected. At the moment, the police don't respect the constitution, politicians don't. We need to reach a level where the law applies equally to everyone. You don't have laws for the poor and laws for the rich. The rich can break any law they want and get away with it. When the poor do it, they're jailed or killed. So where we want us to go is where a country where our institutions work and the rule of law is respected. Uh, how would you respond to this when someone says, Bonnie, you have a beautiful wife and three children. Why don't you just lock yourself in your house, do what you do best, take pictures, win awards, and live your life? Why don't you just do that? I think I'll be protesting in my house and they wouldn't like it. I'll start bringing those pictures at my house. I'm like, I want my right, I want my right. Uh, I've tried, actually. I've tried to be silent. I have gone. There's a time like last year after we did the graffiti and all that, there was so much pressure. It was very risky because we were doing it at night and I went back home and I was frustrated. And I thought I should quit this. 
but I can't quit it. Like it's burning me. I have to speak. Uh, I've spent the last four years since 2008 preaching peace. Which I'm turning. I travel across the country telling people we need to heal as a nation. And went to the graffiti. So you can't isolate me and say I'm this guy. Because I've done work. My work speaks for itself. I've done the street exhibitions, spoke about preaching peace and healing this country from the vault and voting responsibly. And right now what you have is the biggest task, holding the government accountable to its promises. The, the Uhuru cabinet was sworn in yesterday. Now every single citizen has a responsibility to ensure they deliver their campaign promises. So it's tick tock, tick tock, you're counting. First 100 days, what do you promise you're going to do? Let's do it. So you're going to do this. Are you willing to die for 40 million people? Ah, me, I'm not dying for them. I'm dying for my kids. Them, they'll enjoy. You see, even if I die, I know my wife is watching this. She'll tell them, your daddy loved you. But I don't think anyone wants to kill me. And they're, unless they're stupid, why would you kill me? Are you sure about that? We'll all die. You see, no one is going to live forever, even if you steal all that money. But like Alonso is dead. He stole billions. He was he buried with his billions. It is one casket, one pair of shoes. So the, the, the truth is, by the end of the day, we shall all die. No matter how much money you steal, no matter how much money you amass, we're all going to die. Our politicians are very short-sighted. They don't think about posterity. They grab our forest, they grab our parks, they're killing our elephants. They don't think about their grandkids. We have no other Kenya. This is the only country that we're going to do. If we destroy Nairobi National Park, it will all become stories that, oh, Kulikwanga na Wanyama Nairobi National Park. They need to think beyond that. Right now, they had to bring a pathologist from the UK. Why? Because they can't trust one from here. When this guy gets sick, Beth Mugo and Yang Nyong, where do they go abroad? Why? Because our hospitals are down. And guess what? Those are the guys with the money. I have a problem that you elect thugs and we live in a country governed by thugs. And that's the reality. And I have a problem with that. And as long as we have thugs in power, and if this country is run by thugs, I'll always speak. And I say, people say I'm paid. I'm not paid by anyone. If you have any evidence I've been paid, show it, and I'll shut up forever. If someone is paying me to speak, tell me who. I have a bank account in Kenya. You can access it. Go, call the bank manager. Ask, do a Google search. I have no foreign accounts. I have no investment. And I'm not leaving Kenya. I'm not fleeing. So even if they come and say, oh, we're going to kill you, I'm not leaving. In Dakar, Hapa, Hapa. And even if they killed me, guess what? They'll have to bury me in Kenya. No else. And if I was to disappear, they only throw my body in Uganda or Tanzania. Sita kwa ni Kenya tu. Kuna pandeta ni peleka. This is my country. Kenya ni kwetu. Our forefathers shed blood for this country. So I'm not unique. I'm not special. Me katilili wa menza. Kwa itale na rapsa moe. Didan kimathi. They came before us. They were young people and they were doing these things. So I'm not alone. It's not unique. And I don't think Kimadi did so that we could enjoy Facebook and Twitter. No, I don't think so. There's more to life than having fun. You need to find a purpose and live for it. For me, for my purpose, hold these guys accountable until death. Mm -hmm. And in this purpose, buddy, you're passionate about it. That I do. It's evident. Certainly the whole country knows about that. What about that criticism that you just mentioned of people saying, well, this guy and many other people are doing it, or the activists are doing it because they are paid. I earn my living as a photographer. That's how I do. I do projects, I work for people, I travel, I give lectures, and I get paid. That's how I earn my living. And you can, that's proof to that. So I tell guys, if you think I'm being paid, tell me who is paying me. Show me who is paying me. Tell me who is that donor who gives people money. And if you think he's paying me, go tell him to give you money to go and protest as well. Let me tell you, I used, to, this is a fact, I used to earn more money as a photographer than how much money I struggle now because I used to work for Safaricom. Bob Collin would give me work to go and do for Safaricom Foundation. He doesn't give me any work anymore. Why? Because I'm an activist. Or I used to work as a photographer. I've done shoots for big companies in this country. Do they give me work anymore? No, because they can't stand me. This is the other thing about philanthropy in this country. They don't even try and fund progressive ideas. Oh, they want to find a children's home, which is very good. But there are things that we need to fund. Accountability, governance. We need to have homegrown solutions. So this thing about, OK, assuming that the government is donor funded, right? So assuming the donors are funding me, let's assume for once, are they funding me to destroy my country or build my country? You see, you, you're, you're missing, people are missing the point. Is the work that I'm doing building or destroying this country? 
Let me tell you, if I was breaking the law or destroying this country, the government would have jailed me a long time ago. I would be in jail right now. If I was a terrorist, I would be dead right now. The government knows that I'm doing the right thing. The people in power know that I'm doing the right thing. And it's what we should all do. If we held our leaders accountable, Kenya is a beautiful country. I travel, I've seen so many countries. You have an amazing country, amazing people, but you have the most idiotic, selfish bunch of leaders elected by us. And it's a shame. And the church is a letdown because the church is silent and they're in bed with those politicians. The corporate world as well is in bed with those politicians because the corporate world, corruption, all these things. So when you speak, they have a problem when you speak. But you won't stop speaking. I'll continue speaking. Mm -hmm. And, and to, to connect to that, you, you've mentioned about your career. Certainly that is not without question. Everyone knows that, internationally recognized. What do you say to your relatives? <laughs> That's a tough one, man. That's a tough one. Uh, they have a big problem. I, they have a big problem because they're concerned about my life. But my life is not my own. They have to keep... I didn't create myself. I didn't find myself this, like, body created himself. So uh, I don't have to worry about my life. It's not mine. It's not mine, man. So why should I get concerned about my own life? It's, I didn't create myself. And God loves me. And if God tells us, let's go home, I'm going to go home. I'm a born-again Christian. So me, I believe in life after death. And I don't think my God is that bad that he would like to take me away from my kids who are very young and my beautiful wife. God doesn't want to do that. He's not mean like that. Are they proud of you? Uh, they are very proud of me. My, I was with my daughter and my son at the protest, and then they, they went home when the tear gas started. So I'm trying, I don't bring up cowards. I want my kids to know what I do. And maybe one day, if I, something happens to me, they'll get that spirit and they'll continue the battle. As in, it's a struggle, it goes on and on. And guess what? Maybe 50 years from now, there'll be another issue they'll be fighting for. Yes, sir, and Bonnie, we speaking about Twitter and Facebook and where this platform, or the conversation that we all have and we all, uh, you know, certainly take our issues are. Uh, people who disagree with you fundamentally with what you do uh, and say, well, listen, I don't agree with what you do. I think there's certainly other means and ways for you to provide your discontent, for you to show your sign of discontent to the state, to the government, and everything that's happening. What do you say to people disagree with your means and ways of making your point known and raising your voice? I have no problem with them. We can't all agree. But I'm an artist. I'm expressive. And if you look at my work, that's how my work is. I'm very expressive in the way I do my things, even in the way I talk and move my hands. And so if you look at my work, my work has energy and action. So even the pigs are a piece of art, those graffiti in the pigs, they need to be able to see that. Uh, but we can't all agree. I think even going back to the prophets, even like Jesus, and when Jesus was in this world, not everyone agreed with him, but he was a son of God, and people said, oh, that, John the Baptist, they put his head on a, on a, on a plate. So we can't, I don't, I don't blame them, actually. Like, I don't blame people who are trying to make the issue about the pigs, not the peace salary. They're missing the point. So I look at them and I feel, I feel sorry for those people. I'm a typical middle class guy. I grew up, struggled to be where I am, I hustled, but I make money and I live well. Not because I'm paid by anyone, because I work as a photographer. And so I'd actually go back to my normal life and live the way I want. And I actually enjoy like any other person, go to blankets and apathy and do whatever I want, but I don't do that. So, they're missing the point. I don't want to do this for fame. I don't need to be famous. It doesn't help me. I don't think being on the paper is going to pay my rent. It doesn't pay my rent. I have to go and work. That doesn't pay my school fees. You know, Joa, what of Kiriangi? Kunashida, Kenya is very short. We're short sighted. That's the reason why you're, you're being led by pigs. What do you say, buddy, you're ahead of your type? Uh, and I'll give you examples. Uh, when you were going to protest uh, against Atwali, you certainly had many people sitting amongst a crowd of people, if you like. And you stood up, uh, you started shouting, and then when this uh, Atulis, uh, Jeshil Atulia started approaching you, you were starting to run here and there. And the group, no one came to either raise their voice or to your defense. Do you think you're ahead of your type? Do you think that you're just way too ahead of every one of us? I think no. This is the right time. So, first May, 
we were arrested two people. Uh, two days ago, there were 17 of us who were arrested. What that means that over time, there's confidence and there's more courage. So this action that we're trying to do, they may look stupid to the guys who are cowards seated at home, but it's building more courage to other people who are building the movement. So the movement is going to grow. And I hope that the government is not going to deal with us like Mungiki, because that's what the government did. Uh, Mungiki, yes, they, had their own, they did their own things, uh, there was extortion and all that, but the government was killing young people and making them disappear. And when Oscar Kingara and GP Ogulo were investigating that, they were killed. So I hope the government won't kill us, because that's what the government does. I remember when Satoshi was alive, he said that the government has a hit squad. We know that, that the government has a hit squad. When you read the papers, you see how many young men are dying every other day. So I couldn't become the target. But even if I became the target, out of the 17 who were arrested two days ago, there'll be one who'll come out. And you'll, it's like all you're doing is planting seeds. And those seeds will actually flourish. Eventually, you're going to get fruits. If you look at the tomboy airlifts, uh, we had Wangari Madai and Barack Obama's dad. And we had people like Philip Ocheng, and the people who went away and came back and built this country. And actually, when Barack Obama senior went, we got the US president. And we go to Hungary, Mother, who was the first Nobel winner in K woman, actually, the first woman Nobel winner in the world, in Africa. And what that means that the seed that I'm planning today, maybe 20, 30 years from now, will get from the movement, a president, from the movement, a clean person. I must ask you this, though. Uh, this is fighting a system, an entire system that is established, politics. Uh, you're fighting a game that is, you know, it's a, it's a dirty game in the end. What do you think this will learn in terms of if you push fire and you see that this is not getting anywhere, and in the bones of bones, this is not getting anywhere, you're pushing and nothing is happening, what will you do? I'm not going to give up. They're going to give up. I'm not giving up. As in me, I'll continue being me. Even if I'm going to fight for my small space, you can't victimize me, I'll continue doing that. Uh, I do this so that I may not change them, but they don't change me. That's why I continue speaking. I don't want to become like one of them. I see people joining. Uh, civil society or politics and they become very corrupt. Uh, if you look at the people who went to civil society in the 90s and they went to in 2000, early 2000s and then they went to government, they're the ones in the biggest scandals from anglo leasing and even some of them in the major scandal because they were greedy from the word go and it was in them and they were able to hide it. I don't want to hide my stand where I stand at any given time. I say this is where I am and you know where I stand at any given time so that I don't become like one of them. And this is what I say, and I'm saying publicly, that Kenyans can hold me accountable to my words. Uh, my wife and my friends can tell you, I'm a man of my word. If I give you my word, I keep it. I have to push myself to keep it. And so we want a just country. And I think in our lifetime quest, we're going to get a just country. And I think Uhuru and Ruto, if we overlook the past, have a perfect opportunity to change this country. They can do that. They can just enforce the law to the fullest, but maybe they have dirty hands. They are unable to do that. How about you join politics and clean <laughs> from the inside? I'm serious. Uh, maybe one day if we survive that long. How long? How long are we talking? No, if we get to live, if we build a movement and people are willing to change the system, and you have the numbers, then we can join politics. But I don't join politics alone. I'll become like that madman in parliament. Don't listen to me. Wazima mepeleka bungi. Let me be the madman out here, only accountable to my wife who knows that I'm not mad, I'm a very sane man, than going to politics alone and realizing that I'm that only person that who speaks in parliament but no one listens to. We can only change the system if we have the numbers. But our Kenyans are willing to change for ideas and ideologies and clean people who are not willing to bribe to get elected. Because I don't want to go and start buying votes. I can't afford, unless you want me to steal, come bribe you, buy your vote, then go steal to get my money back. Because that's what they do. When you see, even the deputy president dishing out money at a football match. Is he getting the money from? You know, that's a very kind of behavior, kupatia to pesa. We didn't elect you to give us money. We elected you to go create jobs. You know, if you have jobs, you don't need your money. Keep your money for you and your wife and your kids. Wake up pesa yako, nipatie kazi nifanye, nipatie bibi yangu chakula. Hii mambo ya kupatia handouts, ni mbaya. But unarelay na handouts jokuna makazi. That's why you have the handouts na omba serikali. Na omba serikali kusababu wakuna kazi. If you create jobs, by the way, You'll never see me in the streets. To do what? I'll be a madman to go to the streets. Right now I'm saying, give the young people jobs. Don't give us handouts. So tell the, vice, the deputy president, don't go to a soccer match to give out money. Do your job, create jobs, make sure that the soccer stadiums are safe. 
that I can go with my kids. I want to be tear gas because cops don't know what to do to control to do crowd control. When Anglo listening happened, we were supposed to have a forensic lab that when you walk to a cop station, they can be able to tell who is a criminal, who is not a criminal. Just reform and empower institutions to work. Don't rely on goodwill of handouts. It will be a party to person issue. And do you think these young generation that you and me belong to, do you think we've been sucked into the system? I blame this and I say this over and over again. It's the parents that we have to blame. Our parents brought us cowards, man. Don't speak to authority, don't talk back, don't question things. And we need to go back and discover our voice and say, it is not wrong to ask the right question. As in, if we start asking the right questions as young people, we're going to go, if someone comes and says, I'm going to do this, you ask them the how. You see, leadership and government is not magic. That you're going to make some questions and give me a final product. It's well thought process that you can say, I'm going to create jobs and this is how I'm going to do it. So, young people who are watching, uh, the Jubilee government made promises. You know what is the proudest thing that you can do in this country and the, your most patriotic duty it's to hold them accountable. And if they don't do deliver, you teach them a lesson. 2017, vote for some fresh leaders. Absolutely. I'm hoping you'll be in part of that lineup of 2017. If I will be alive then, why not? But my final question <laughs> before I, I let you leave, buddy, where, where are these pigs? Finally, when, if you're going to get them back, uh, what, what, are, what are you going to do with them? Uh, yeah, so I'll go and try and get my money back from the guys who sold them to me. <laughs> so you're, you're going to get, enter into a business of selling back the pigs? Yes, I'm like, these pigs, we paid X amount. Can I get half of it and then I get back the pigs? How much will you be selling them for? Uh, I won't tell you, man. <laughs> but, but you try to sell it. I know, dude. Go and buy your bacon at the supermarket. It's much cleaner. <laughs> Thank you, James. Mwangi. You've done well. Asante. Thank you very Ashkuru. much. All right, talking to photo activist Boniface Mwangi and just talking through the issues that have been occupied Parliament, the big issue, and just the big story, really, what does he believe and where is this going? That has been Katie Lavoie. Thank you very much for your company. My name is James Mudd. Let's do this all over again next week, same time, same station.